I last left you off in Okinawa at the Yonobera Marina where we would spend about four or five days preparing for the next leg of the trip. The list of things to do seems reasonable at first, but surprisingly the days get full of chores no matter what. Steve had dropped a tiny bungee cord in the sea and was determined to dive and find it. Just here to Steve. They call ya. Steve dropped a bungee cord into the water by accident. <laughs> well, I paid 25 cents for it and I'm gonna get on the other. <laughs> It did take a couple of tries, but he did end up finding it in the end. We needed a new set of binoculars for the boat. So while we went to go get those, we did a little tour of a World War II memorial. We ate out a few times, did lots of little walks around the area. So it's so kind of easy to be able to be in a foreign country in a way because of the Google Translate things. You can just put it over top of the writing and it gives it to whatever language you want it to translate to. So we use this all the time. And I find that no matter where I go, I always seem to find a stray friend or two found him by the dumpster. Our consultant Kirk had said that we would need different fenders for the boat in Japan. So we bought some that he had recommended, had them shipped to the marina, and he was right about that. We did end up needing these big ones. Each time we stop somewhere and spend even a couple of days there, we seem to frequent the stores so often that we sort of feel like we're at home. It was time to go, but we needed to buy a little bit of fuel before leaving. Our plan was to head to the island of China, but Steve thought we would continue further and head to the island of Tokunoshima. We have a problem. Pardon? Oh, I'm just talking to the camera. Oh, oh, oh. We have a problem. The bill engine room bilge light horn. Back to port? No, 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 no. no. Keep on back going. to our regular port. Okay. Okay, fine. So the fresh water, there's a leak in the piping system. In the So I turned the fresh water pump off. This would be another overnight passage, which was roughly 120 nautical miles and took approximately 22 hours. Although I was still seasick, on this trip we had more favorable wind and seas for a good part of it, so both of the sails were up for a portion of this trip. to Tokonoshima. First thing on the list, find a barber. Uh, arigato. 
はい、ありがとうございます。はい、どういたしましてどういたしましてどういたしまして Good haircut, Steve. はい。The people here were very kind and welcoming, and we had a fun time watching the Japanese army in training. He wants to go see this shrine. shrine. It's a war memorial thing. It's about a kilometer away from where we're. Like at the shore there, it's raining. But it's warm. Yeah, it's not cold. Looking at all the homes, thinking of buying something and moving here. We were just walking by, and this guy came out to give us some fruit. I think he wants to give us some bananas. Oh, he's gonna show us how it goes. Ah. Well, that's maybe the small ones. Mm. Then, of course, we had to fix things. Now, <clears throat> to be honest, whittling this footage down into something palatable has been a bit of a challenge for me. There's a lot of different things going on all the time, and not all of these things are appealing to everyone. So, I think for the sake of these videos for now, I'll keep it as simple as possible. There were problems with a lot of the different systems on the boat, as there are with any new boat or any boat really for that matter. So, every day consisted of a variety of things. We did a little bit of sightseeing, cleaning, mixed in with tackling all the necessary chores. For the last little bit, we had bought these maxi pads. <laughs> They're like absorbent pads. They're supposed to be on the diagram for like kitchen grease or something, but kind of perfect to put at the very bottom. The biggest system issue at this point is trying to figure out the water maker, being that we lost a quarter of our tank of fresh water leaving Okinawa. The toilets use fresh water to flush, and now we have no way of adding to our water system. So, water restrictions were now in effect. After a couple nights there, it was time to go. We left early and had about 30 nautical miles to get to the island of Amami. Arriving to our boy in a well protected bay called Atetsu. This was the roughest passage thus far. We spent two nights here doing much of the same thing. But I also cooked a nice meal. One of the things I like in general in life is to try and make do with what I've got. 
So I always try to use what's in the fridge, in the pantry, to make something, you know? Kind of like the challenge of it. This kind of stuff is fun for me because I don't really have all the ingredients that I would normally use to do either of these dishes, but I have enough to kind of make something close to it. So use what you have and have fun with it. So I'm gonna make, we bought a lot of food and you know, trying to use up some stuff. There's all these mushrooms, actually these king oyster mushrooms that Dennis bought and they're starting to go bad. So I'm trying to think of something, another way to use them. And I've made like a pulled pork with them before. Um, so you just shred them. They're a very meaty mushroom. So just shred them and then cook them cook them down, I'll cut up some onions. The only thing is I don't have barbecue sauce, I have ketchup. Um, but I'll just have to make some kind of sauce to go with them. But uh, it's usually, it's good. And then I also had bought a squash, there's lef leftover squash. So I'm gonna make a squash soup. How is it, boys? Good. This is great. Mm. <laughs> Compliments to the chef. <laughs> good. Steve? Pretty good. We're just trying to get this fellow over here a girlfriend. Oh, Dennis is single, by the way, ladies. Yeah. And It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Steve? <laughs> uh, what about your girlfriend? Any Japanese army girls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one checking you out. I know. Well, you can't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> we left Tetsu and we're heading to Nays, the largest city on the island of Amami. Leaving here, I tried to fly the drone, but unfortunately we didn't slow the boat down enough and the drone, while it took off, ended up hitting the wind vane and went straight into the sea, uh, along with all of the bits of footage that I still had on the SIM card. So all of that got lost. It was a bit of a drag, but um, yeah, live and learn, I suppose. Getting to Nays, took the day and I think this was the most seasick I was yet on this whole trip. For some reason, I kept getting sicker and sicker on these passages. We've actually been here for six days now. We pulled into Nays, N-A-Z-E, -E, on the 14th and today is the 19th. And we weren't planning on staying here this long, but the weather permitted us to stay here. In hindsight, if we had not pulled in here at all and just kept going, we would be really far north but we wanted to come here and check it out. <clears throat> and then by the time we had decided to leave, the weather systems changed and Kirk, our consultant, advised us to stay here. Our plan was to kind of hit, there's three little islands and we were gonna go to one of those islands, but he said the, the moorage isn't great there and we're 
best to stay here. And that was the right choice because the storm was big. The winds were how big out there? 40 knots? Yeah. 40 knot winds at least out in the sea. In here we got as high as 35 knots and the waves were breaking over the breakwaters. We're kind of in three breakwater systems here and the boat was bobbing all over and it was pretty gnarly for a few days. So unfortunately it's just been this long until a break in the weather system is allowing us to go, which we were going to go today, but we would still have 20 knots of wind on our nose. So tomorrow is the plan again and it's supposed to be fairly calm. So <clears throat> not much has really been going on. We've just been working on little things on the boat. I mean, like I said, the, the big thing was the water maker and that was a few days of work on that. And long story short, it, it isn't a go. We can't use the water maker. One of the gauges is the high pressure gauge is broken. There must be a seal gone in it. And anyway, so we can't use a water maker. Water restrictions we've been enforcing, I guess. And then we found a spigot actually a couple days ago with fresh water that's drinkable. So Steve and Dennis took a jug back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to top up the water tanks. Um, we also got fuel in the last couple days and we've just been, yeah, fiddling around, figuring things out on the boat, biking everywhere, going to all these different stores to try and find the little supplies that we need. Groceries, walking, biking. I got sick a couple days ago. I'm still feeling sick. I've been wearing a mask in the boat because I don't want to get Steve or Dennis sick. I don't know what it was, but I was in bed for two days, some sort of deathly flu. <clears throat> so anyway, we're heading to Yakushima. And there we are meeting two more people. We are picking up Ian. Ian was on the trip from Hong Kong to Taiwan. And then his wife, Trish, is joining us. And here's where things kind of fall apart for me. I kind of fall off the wagon here, you guys, in terms of filming and documenting this trip in a way that's really meaningful to me. That Japanese plague I caught really took the wind out of my sails. I also continued to struggle with the seasickness on top of that and became really worried about getting Steve sick. Dennis at this point did get sick too, so my focus has just really shifted at this point in the trip. But anyway, here we are heading on an overnight passage to Iso, I-S-S-O, on Yakushima Island picking up Ian and Trish. Now this was our first and only day that was warm and felt like summer. From here on out, it had gotten cold. So I threw a swimsuit on for a couple of hours and rested on the beach. And then we were off again for another overnight passage. At this point, we are kind of on the inland sea and are much more protected, which is making these passages less rough, I guess you could say. But that doesn't mean that they're easier, because we still run into problems. <clears throat> we have a little bit of a problem. The, um, we're going along all just fine. And then there was an alarm went off that said the circuit, fuel in injection circuit was low. And it was like a really, really, really loud beeping. Went on for about 10 minutes and then we couldn't figure out what was going on. So he was like, I think I'll just shut the engine down. It won't turn back on now. So we're on like chat forums trying to figure out what's going on. In the meantime, we're bobbing around in the middle of the sea. Actually, not in the middle of the sea, but we have, there's land there. Some sort of electronic issue with the fuel injector code or something. So everyone is just trying to figure out what's going on right now. We spent about 30 to 45 minutes bobbing out there on the ocean, trying to figure out why the engine wouldn't start. We tried calling John Deere customer service support, which we never got through to, by the way. And we basically got to the point of calling for the Japanese Coast Guard on Channel 16 to see about getting towed to shore. This is another long story short, but the Coast Guard never really did respond to our call to them which is weird, but it ended up working in our favor because we figured out the problem. 
Now I can't really take all the credit here, but something I said to Steve about the batteries prompted him to check on something and he tried starting the engine with the generator battery and it started right away. So this is another perfect example of how complex a boat is like this, like all the systems and how important it is to know every single system inside and out. So there was actually no problem with the boat. It was just, there was a switch that needed to be turned on so that the engine battery was being charged and that switch had not been on. So we were on our way and not long after that happened, we ended up boating through a Japanese Navy exercise. So they actually had approached us kind of on the sea and then ended up calling us on the radio and trying to escort us uh, around the area that they were working in. That was kind of fun. Anyway, we spent a couple of nights here in Hososhima and I really have to mention how hospitable the Japanese people are. So this is pretty cool. <laughs> we pulled in and apparently today is a holiday in Japan or maybe this, this island. So we're trying to find somewhere to eat. We ended up coming to a restaurant, but it's closed because it's the holiday. But the guy said that he wanted to cook us dinner anyway and so that we could take it back to the boat and eat on the boat. There was actually an Australian guy who's been in Japan for 30 something years came and translated so that we could figure out what the guy was telling us. There he is. So he's, I think he's gonna bring, bring the... Arigato. 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 <laughs> What are these? What, what's that? Uh, this is a black pepper potato. Chips. Oh, chips. chips. Yeah, chips. Chips. Yeah. 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 And Rome, <laughs> when the sun set on the beach in Mexico. A local was wanting to spend an evening speaking English with us. Daisuke was his name. So we had a really nice evening of entertainment with him, and karaoke was something that he said he really loved. So we uh, tried to, I don't know, sing and do a little bit of karaoke and had some fun with that. I ain't got no cigarettes Baba. <laughs> Two hours of pushing broom The next day you give it away Bring me down I pray, oh pretty baby Now that I found you stand Then we were off to Kame, a little port we tucked into again to wait out uh, high winds and wait for a nice calm day to head out at around the most eastern point of Kyushu. We made one more stop for one more night, testing out the anchor system. Spent some time ashore, and then we were up for a 6 a.m. departure. This would be our last day at sea. November 27th, 6 a.m. 
We have our last day today. And we had to time this passage as we were going through the Bungo Strait. The Bungo Strait. Dreaded Bungo Strait. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which has a lot of current. So we had arrived at 9 a.m., which was slack tide. And lo and behold, we arrived at our final destination of Suo Oshima Island. Here we met Kirk, our consultant at this island and we will moor the boat here on his private dock for an undetermined amount of time. He lives over there. We spent a month at sea. We traveled a thousand nautical miles to get to this point. With the help of our friends and crew, we spent a few hours polishing the boat's bright work before they would each head out on their own continuation of travels in Japan. Steve and I had spent one more day with the boat, cleaning it and putting it to bed until next year. But uh, we have to do some work with the dock and the lines before we go. Right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Captain? Yes. Do you have anything to say? Uh, there's always lots to do when you leave a boat for a long time. Always wor worry. But anyway. We have people watching out for it. We'll get it all done. I have put the last half of this video together from the comfort of home. I've been waiting for this moment since the day I left. Today is December 2nd. This video I will put out on December 3rd. We got home late last night after three long days of travel, including a cancelled flight, which turned into a eight hour drive in a rental car. And I'm just so happy to be home again. We aren't sure of future plans for the boat at this time. So basically this is gonna conclude the boat series for now. And I realized that I really just skimmed the surface on the events and details of this trip, but it's really all that I could offer at this time. It's all I have to put into it. Um, if you have specific questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. So thank you all so much for watching and I can't tell you how much I look forward to seeing you in the next video from home base. Take care. Bye.